Hi, I'm Colleen Keen Jensen, and I'm an artist, engineer, and a very long time uh, resident of Medfield. I moved here from Buffalo, New York, or north of Buffalo, uh, when I was in 10th grade. Went to Medfield High for two years, followed that by UMass, initially going for a degree in psychology, changed my mind, uh, came back home, regrouped, and went to Framingham State to finish up my math and computer science degree. After that, um, I moved to a very long way away. I went to Medway and then Franklin, <laughs> and then came back to Medfield uh, to raise my children. I'm an engineer and an artist, or an artist and an engineer, depending on which part of my life I'm in. And I've had the love of both disciplines throughout my life. I've always loved numbers. I used to work at the kitchen table with my dad, solving math problems for the fun of it. <laughs> I actually took geometry in summer school because I wanted to take more math. <laughs> it's kind of unusual. I started art in seventh grade with the inspiration of an art teacher. Kudos to Mr. Morris, who doesn't know how much he meant to me. From that point on, I just drew, and I drew, and I drew. And I would pick up a magazine, I would draw, and you find a model in there. I love to do portraits. So I, I did so many faces that I made this big collage of all the faces that I did, because I didn't know what to do with them all. I would sit in front of a mirror and draw, because a lot of people don't like to pose for you, so I'd have to do myself. Through college, I ended up taking, besides going for math and computer science, I took drawing, as well as a couple photography classes. So there's always been this push and pull of math, computers, and art. After college, I went into uh, work in software engineering, programming. I worked a commercial as well as government. While I was doing that during the day, at night I took two years of watercolor classes with Angelina Wood in Franklin. It was wonderful. Once a week, every Wednesday night, we'd paint. I also took an acrylic class. So it was a constant desire to be a better artist while at the same time um, continuing with my engineering work. I worked in engineering for 12 years, um, then took a hiatus of 18 years to raise my children, I actually homeschooled them for a while, and, and also went, started a BFA program at Framingham State again during that time. So again, it's this constant back and forth. I'm consistent, but I have two interests. So the two years I spent working towards my BFA were a wonderful two years. It was so engaging to be working with the professors, to work with other students, to work in a studio space, um, to get assignments, and to have to finish them in a short period of time. I liked that because what it does is it gives you a sense of can I complete a task in, in that period of time and how does it come out? And then you critique it with all your fellow students. And it's so wonderful because you see all the students' work and all their approach to the same question and how different their answers are and then how they critique or how they see your work. And it's so important to hear that and to not have an ego because you know there's always room for improvement and to really listen hard at what they say. So it was a very wonderful two years and a very engaging two years. I had to leave my BFA so that I could help put the kids through college. Left after two years for the BFA and then worked in engineering again for another 12 years, which is a trick in itself. That's a topic for another conversation. But worked really hard um, in engineering, and uh, after 12 years of that, um, I got back to, into my art again. So towards the end of my engineering career, I actually went back into art um, on the side, and now I am retired since October of 19, 2019, right before the pandemic. <laughs> And uh, I've been painting full-time and going for my new goals ever since. And I try to paint in an impressionistic style. Um, I'm not trying to repeat what I can get in a photograph because I would just take a picture. So I'm really trying to convey my idea. And in order for me to convey my idea, my approach is to do more impressionistic style to help you lead you to my idea. The relationship between art and math is really pretty strong. Both work off of the natural world, and that's my interest, the natural world and all the wonders we have in the world. So in math, you're looking at it through a, a number way, uh, which is really cool. Um, but in art, you, what you're doing is translating a three-dimensional world into a two-dimensional surface, in my case, since I like to paint and draw. And with that, 
um, there's so many laws of math and physics that come into play. You need aerial perspective, linear perspective, you have color harmonies. What I'm trying to do with painting is translate a three-dimensional world um, in all its splendor into a two-dimensional surface and trying to convey ideas of what I see and what I want you to see. So there's a couple of things going on. One is just the whole mathematical side where I'm looking at the aerial perspective, the linear perspective, the color harmony, the value studies, the compositional arrangement. There's all this math type of technicality going on, but at the same time, there's this whole vision that you're trying to create where you want to convey your idea. What idea do you really want to get across? And what elements within those different um, tools that, that you have will get you there? My journey with art and my journey with engineering, I've got to say it's the same journey, and it's a lot related to the soft skills I spoke about before. It's about saying yes. It's about saying, I want to do this, and I'm not going to say that I can't. So you're always saying yes. Somebody at work, when they ask me to, to do a certain task, I might not have known the topic yet, but I said, sure, I get to learn a new topic. And then you dive into it and you learn it and you keep growing and growing from saying yes and going on. And it's the same thing in art. You work towards a goal, you say, I'm going to get really good at this. I don't know how, but I'm going to get really good at it. And then you figure out how to get there. These days, there's so much information. There's really no excuse for not at least bettering yourself in some way. But that whole approach of just looking forward, saying yes, and sensing commitment is really what my journey has been about and staying with your passions. Did my engineering shape me or did my art shape me? I'd say I shaped them. It's not that the engineer made me, I made the engineer and I'm making the artist. So what mediums do I work in? I work in probably more than I should, but I, I love them all, so I work in them all. I work in whatever ones come across. They all are different. They all have very unique properties. Watercolor is so wonderful on how the paint just moves on its own and you get all unexpected results and you work from the vibrancy of the paper. It takes a lot of planning to do watercolor, but it's really pretty wonderful when you see some of the results of layering the transparencies and everything else with watercolors. Oil and acrylic, opaque mediums. The feel of touching your paintbrush to the canvas and painting that way is just wonderful. Working where you put down a layer, you start from dark to light and you work with your underdarks and you build it up and you can change it too. If you change your mind, if it's not going well, you can actually modify it, unlike watercolor. Oil is slow drying, acrylic is fast drying. Oil has a lot more solvents and things you can mix in, so there's a lot more to learn about getting started in oil. Acrylic is pretty attainable. It's a great first medium because you really just sit down with your acrylic and paint. It's really pretty nice and cleans up easier with soap and water. And then I ran into pastels. And I used to think pastels were just oil pastels and I tried them before and I thought those were hard. And I wasn't getting results I wanted so I really didn't do pastels. And then I discovered soft pastels, world of difference. And the brilliance you get with the pastel because Pastel basically has very little binder, just is just pigment held together as loosely as possible so that what you get are these brilliant crystals showing through your paintings. And you're working so differently, you're working with sticks, you're layering sticks over sticks and no blending of your colors. Well, you can blend with your hands, but you'll break down the crystals, so you gotta be careful. But you're really just putting color over color. It's a very fast experience. There's no drying time. Um, it's immediate. You see it. It's, it's really quite wonderful. So I've really been taken to pastels. And when you're doing a study or when you're making a piece that you really want to frame and hang up, there's, there's two different processes. If you follow process for making the piece, it will come out 10 times better. It will go faster. It'll be much more enjoyable. When you're doing studies, I just do it. You just go and try things and experiment. But when you really want to make a piece that is a finished piece, it's really worthwhile to spend the effort and go through the steps. The first step is your idea. It's your aha. Like when I'm driving down the road and all of a sudden I stop because it's something is just really beautiful and I have to pull over and if I don't have my stuff, I take a picture and I think about it. That's, that's the idea. Why did you stop? 
What was your intent? Whatever your reason is, that's your idea. And that's number one. And you put that little idea up on a sticky and you stick it to your easel. And everything you do after that works off of that idea. Otherwise, you end up with a, a picture that doesn't lead you, doesn't tell a story, that doesn't go somewhere. So your idea is number one. After you have your idea, you start thinking composition. What's it going to be? So you start arranging. Your idea, again, is your focal point. So you start building your composition around whatever your idea is. You want to lead your eye into that idea. You want to take things out that don't make that idea. You might leave the person walking the dog in there, but if it's really about the sunset, you might just take that person out totally altogether. So there's, it's a very important process of this elimination, simplifying a painting, and that happens at phase two in your making your composition. Once you get your composition, now you're thinking about, it kind of plays with composition, your darks and your lights. And it's called notan. You work your notan through your picture. Uh, it's the play of dark against light. And so that's the next phase. Do your darks and lights hold up? Does it, isn't it interesting composition? Is it going where you want it to go? Now look at your values. In between, dark and light is two values, right? Black and white. The eye generally sees 10 values. So you can use your value scale. In general, you can just stick to three values for this phase, so dark, medium, and light. But you define those out in your picture. So you start making thumbnail sketches, and you make them in different views. But remember, whenever you do any of that, you're thinking back to your original, your original question. What's the intent of this picture? Is it, if it's a, a sunset, you're probably thinking landscape, right? But maybe not. Maybe you want the reflection with the sunset, and you're thinking vertical. But those kind of thoughts are going on at this point. And they're important to make a lot of thumbnail sketches with black, with three levels of value. Um, once you go through your thumbnail sketches, now you think about color. A lot of ways to do color. Is it a high intensity, meaning high values, meaning not too many darks, and you're gonna just have them in the higher range? Maybe you're gonna have lower intensities. Maybe you want a tonal painting in the middle. Could be any of those. You also can do color harmonies where you stick to things within certain color sets. Maybe you're gonna do a limited palette. All these kinds of decisions about what your palette is going to be happens next. And you play around with that. You can play around with simple sketches where you make circles and squares and see how um, those colors work together. You know, you work those issues out now. Once you get your palette set, you can even premix colors to what you want to have within a range. Then when you go to paint it, the painting gets easy. What do I recommend for people wanting to paint? Number one is paint. Set up a good space because without having a good space, you won't paint. And it's so important because the years when I didn't paint, it's because I couldn't make a space in my environment for my art. If you have to go and set up all the time, you're not going to do it because you're talking left brain versus right brain. If you have to get that left brain engaged all the time before you do your creative right brain, you just shut down your right brain. Get your space, get it all set up, and now you have a place to work. Read, um, watch YouTube videos, take, there's so many workshops, take workshops, get into artist groups, go out painting with other artists, talk with other artists, go to people's shows. There's people have artist receptions. I, that's my first, uh, point was uh, of getting back in touch with people in Medfield was coming to a Medfield cable show uh, for Marino Bay and we've been friends ever since and it, it's just wonderful the artist community and thanks to Medfield uh, TV for for doing that it really means a lot it's a way of connecting with your with your community and with other artists there was a recent painting we did at uh, the State Hospital. They asked us to go plein air for the Cultural Center when they were celebrating their new buildings with all their beautiful flowers in front. And they asked some of us artists who now I know of because of cable TV, who I got in contact with all these artists. I'm now part of that community. And community building just makes you expand your horizons and keeps you engaged. The pandemic is pretty awful for a lot of things but I think it was really good for art in, in a lot of ways, even though it had trouble with the galleries and all that. It made artists get creative in a new way, get onto Zoom and create more videos. I was going to workshops where I had to travel. They get expensive. 
Um, you can't go to too many. Right before the pandemic, I was planning on um, visiting my daughter in Seattle and taking a workshop while I was out there. When everything shut down, all these online art workshops happened. They'll continue, they'll still them in person because it's wonderful to be in person. But I have been on so many workshops. I probably, I can't even tell you how many workshops, 20 in the past year. And some of them are five days. And some of the five day workshops were with hundreds of people around the world. So the pandemic <laughs> it has a, almost a renaissance for art in making it accessible to everybody. Everybody can get better. That's what this year, and also artists love being alone in painting. So that part of the pandemic made the pandemic easier because I stayed in and studied and painted. If you as a Medfield resident want to support a local artist, and it's very simple, just connect to me on any of the social medias that I have. It's basically Instagram, Facebook, or visit my webpage. Um, but I would love to have followers and hear your opinions and, and comments from you. It'd, it'd be wonderful. That's it. It's that simple. And if I have a local art show, please come. <laughs> that would be really nice. I would enjoy meeting you in person. So I want to thank everybody for taking the time to, to listen to me. I guess if I have one message going forward is that you tip, put one step in front of the other to achieve your goal. It's all steps. And don't look as your goal is too far away. You're, you're getting closer to it all the time. Don't take no's. When you see a no, no, have the resolve to say, I expect that there's going to be some along the way and make your resolve more solid. Just go, go for it. And don't be afraid to go for it. You have one life and, and live it. So again, thank you very much. And I appreciate your time.